Hello, audience. Thanks for being here with us. I am back with Freddie, who you all have met already and uh, many times and will continue to meet because we're not stopping. So <laughs> you're welcome. Um, anyway, so he is with his family and they are or have become a Nurtured Heart family, which is so cool to me. And I just want, I'm curious, I just want to know about how that is, three generations, um, how that happened, what that's like. And honestly, I just want to be a fly on the wall in your house. So <laughs> here I am peeking. So All yeah, right. introduce yourselves and tell us about that. Well, I am Freddie, as Mussy said, you guys know me. I'm Anita. I am Freddie's mom and Serena's grandmother, um, long term, long time educator. Uh, we do live together and always have. We've made that choice to to live in our intergenerational home. Um, that's who I am. I'm Serena, Freddie's daughter and Anita's granddaughter. Um, I got my bachelor's in psychology and I'm working on my master's in counseling. And Serena and her husband live here with us too. So three generations living under the same house, uh, same roof in the same house. If we don't live under the house, that would be really odd. <laughs> um, basement. <laughs> so, so I think it would be interesting to kind of hear about how we we came across Nurtured Heart briefly, which is my mom has been a teacher here in Tucson for for as long as I remember. Uh, I guess it's been what fifty years now. A long say that a long time. time. And I was a high school teacher here in Tucson for over twenty years. So I think I first um, came across Nurtured Heart in probably the late nineties. Howie was working with the school here, and and we came across it. It really just did not work for me. Didn't sound like it made any sense. It was a different time. It was a different nurtured heart approach back then. And certainly I was different. Um, so as I went, my sister and I were running our own charter school here, about 120 students, specifically a college prep school for kids that were going to be the first in their family to go to college. So it was a kind of rough crowd, especially in the early days of charters. And um, anyways, when I came back to Nurtured Heart, it was probably 2018, 2019, somewhere around there. And everything, just my first CTI, um, everything just clicked and felt incredibly right, right from the get-go. And I just immediately jumped in. Um, and then I came back to the next CTI and then the next CTI. And then I think I went to like seven or eight CTIs in a row within a, a very short time. But um. I think what I would just share really quickly, and then I want to hear from you guys how it went, is the University of Arizona, where Howie holds the CTIs here in town, is literally within walking distance of our house. So I walked to the to the campus and I go in, and if anybody's ever been to a CTI, it's a in person, it's an overwhelming you know scenario, and there's so much love and joy and energy in this big conference room and. And I came home just so fired up. You know, a lot of people have to travel. And so they have to like stay in the hotel and they're kind of isolated from family. Well, I just got to walk home, right? So I walked home and we're sitting around the dinner table and I'm like buzzing with all this energy of all this stuff. And I just was trying things out. And some went really well with these two specifically. Um, family members that are not on camera, my wife and my son, it's definitely been a harder struggle. So my wife has has bought into an awful lot of things now, Nurtured Heart. My son, very, very resistant to most of it still. Um, but that makes sense. So my point is, when I came home all excited to try things out, it was very hit and miss. And um, but obviously, we now have a very Nurtured Heart filled household. So that's how it started from my perspective. From my perspective, I met Howie. Um, I'm a special ed teacher by training, so I've worked um, and taught self-contained behavior disorder classes. That label has changed. Sometimes it's emotionally disturbed. Sometimes it's been a resource setting, all kinds of different things. Um, but I was trained in behavior modification. Um, when I first heard about Nurtured Heart long, long time ago, it also did not register with me. It seemed at that time 
that it was just very much a behavior management system. Um, and I've always had some issues with behavior management, even though that is what I chose to teach. So I would say what brought me back um, was actually Freddie's energy. Um, as, as you may know, because you've known him for a while now, he's a pretty intense energy. I raised him, so I know this. Um, he's, a, he's got a very strong voice. And again, living in the same house, I think we all kind of became comfortable in our roles. My role tended to be um, one, I, I do avoid conflict at most every turn of the road um, as often as I can. Um, and since I was not, it was a choice that we made, but my mode of operation was usually just to remove myself. Um, so there really was not communication um, in many ways, unless things were going, you know, well, and we were all moving forward. So one of the things that I really noticed that really appealed to me was the changes in Freddie's energy. Um, a willingness to look for positive and to acknowledge that, um, to not be critical, um, to provide space for voices around our table. So I think that initially that is what um, caught my interest again. And that's how I got back involved and in, in wanted to, to, uh, to keep to keep building and see how our relationship could improve in our communications in our household. And yes. you're an advanced trainer. Now. I am an advanced trainer now, so we'll talk more about that, but that's what pulled me back in. Um, for me, when my dad discovered Metro the Heart, it was when I was about 18 or 19. So yes, we've always lived together, but when I lived out of the house for two years, when I went to college, and then I moved back for the last two. Um, but so when they discovered Nurtured Heart, again, in about 2018, 19, I was kind of just starting college. That's actually, I think, when he did his first CTI was just a couple months into when I met my now spouse. Um, and so I think it was really a transitionary period. And I think that the, I don't know how it would have gone otherwise, obviously, but I think that having Nurtured Heart in our lives and in such a like a time that we were really focusing on it so uh, pointedly I think it really aided the transition in our relationship dynamics from me being a child to me being an adult um, and also when I did move back to the house after the two years living away was also when the pandemic hit so I think there were seven of us eight of us um, under this roof for a while. Um, and I think having the nurtured heart energy really just aided in what could have been an otherwise really difficult situation and transition. It was a and unique, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. You've taken, you've gone to the CTI as well, Serena. Yes, right? I'm a certified trainer. Yeah. And at what point did you decide or what made you feel like taking that step? I really saw I mean, there were a lot of other factors going into it, too, with life changes and career changes, but I really saw just such a huge difference in my dad, especially. Um, and like I said, when he discovered it was right when I met my now spouse, and so I was thinking more about family and my future kids, or I had my own dogs. Um, and so thinking more about how I would want to be as a parent, um, because obviously, even though Nurtured Heart is for everyone, it's often talked about with kids, so it's easier to make that jump. Um, so I think I just really liked what it could, like the potential it had and what it could bring to my life. And since I was studying psychology and counseling, it just made a lot of sense with the field I was in. And I liked um, the different focus it took, like differently than a lot of the other approaches. So yeah. if you don't mind me zeroing in on you, I, I'm i curious about something and then hold your thoughts, please, because I want to hear them too. Um, so you were in a new, like brand new relationship when your father, it sounds like, made this big transition to this new way of life. Um, so I'm curious about him. Is it your husband? You said no? Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah. that was his, like, I mean, he's still there, right? And he chose to move in with you. <laughs> so something went well, but tell me more about that. I think one of the most interesting things, I've always had a good relationship with my family, my dad, we've always lived together. I chose to come back, obviously. Um, but when I would describe my dad or my family as a kid versus when my spouse describes my can, dad. Can we family, name him? We can call him Caleb. Caleb <laughs> is his name. <laughs> when Caleb describes him, it's like different people. So I think him meeting my family post nurtured heart discovery, um, like just, I mean, it really illustrates the difference in it. Like just the way that they are able to relate and have their relationship is really nice. Um, and he struggles with the doing of it. He's very bought into the idea of it. He wants us, he wants us to do it. He wants to learn more, but it's very, it's very, very different than how he was raised. And he's very not used to talking about any feelings or acknowledging energies or anything like that. Um, so it's definitely, it, the words come to me a lot easier. The words do not come to him easily, um, but we work on it and it's definitely part of our relationship and how we talk about how we want to raise our dogs or our kids. I just want to say I, that. I was just... <laughs> I'll just go, say. Go, go, go. You know that um, so many of us have. I mean, coming into, you come to nurture heart at different, different stages. And, you know, I'll have people who say, well, I came when my kids were teenagers. You're so lucky you came when your kids were babies. And I, I own that a hundred percent. But the idea of building this relationship on the foundation of a new way where he's not even knowing the family that you described from your childhood and you as a person that who you are in the relationship is on this foundation. Um, it, I think um, we, we attract who we are and we attract, we attract based on who we are and we, and we continue patterns that work based on how we're living and, and the choices we're making and everything. And just the fact that this relationship stuck and now you're married and um, that he's bought in at this level is, I feel like such a, I mean, the timing of that is just so aw awesome, aw, aw filled to me that you got like that because you your your whole relationship is built on like such a right side up version versus like starting something you know having all of this kind of baggage behind you of this other way and then being like having to kind of switch that i don't know anyway that just strikes me as such cool timing and i'm i want to say lucky you <laughs> i don't know if that's how you feel it that's a you know that's something that strikes me there's... Yeah, I've not thought about it a ton as our relationship being built on it, just because I was still learning and there's so much that we messed up. But we feel exceptionally lucky that we discovered it before we had kids. We've talked a lot about that, of just like how amazing that is that we can have this kind of basis and time to practice before we ever have kids and that we'll kind of have that going in. I think that's huge. Yeah, there's just two other additional things I think are interesting in the story when I'm well, since I left teaching right about the same time, you know, it's been as I was getting nurtured heart. Um, well, that's a second point as well. But when I'm not being nurtured heart, Freddie, I do a lot of building and remodeling and fixing of things. And my son in law, Caleb, works with me. So I actually spend more time with Caleb often than with anyone else in the household. And we have now for a couple of years. So it's intriguing. Um, I really, really enjoy it. And I don't know if the me from before would have been able to have this relationship, you know, where you're spending this much time and there's so much potential room for friction or conflict. And we just, again, I don't want it to sound like it's all peaches and cream, but we literally have not had a single argument or even frustration and we work together almost every day all the time so that that's just another factor there um but then what well, i wanted to say is can i say really quick that i think what i and i think this is what i was trying to say before also is that i think this says a lot about caleb who he is yeah. that he was attracted into this family and into this dynamic and and is and is sticking it through like because 
just four years before, right, let's say if he had entered the family, like, would that have even worked? It, I think it says a lot about who he is and the type of relationships he seeks and enjoys and appreciates that he's able to just blend in and be a part of this. Um, so, hey, Caleb, I think you're cool, just if you're listening. <laughs> Absolutely. You are, you are among you. people who all agree. Um, <laughs> But related to that, again, it, it's hard, but I also want people to hear, I know we've talked about it in different cases too, like Nurtured Heart is amazing and I appreciate it so much. And it is a part of all of my every day at this point. And at the same time, like there's nothing incredibly new and, and different about it. It makes sense to a lot of us at a heart level when we first hear it, because it just makes sense. Um, almost intuitively, if you can get past the societal training. And so this transition, like I'm just trying to voice without being too like ego based and like random disclaiming. The transition into Nurtured Heart also happened at a time when I was leaving an exhausting career where I would leave the house at 6.30 or 7 every morning and I was working with these kids until 6 or 7 every night. And so a lot of the patient, friendly, tolerant, wise Mr. Mendoza was gone by the time I got home. And so my kids, family, wife, and again, I'm just sharing this because I think it's a pattern so many of us can share. You know, I was out of patience. I was out of tolerance. When I got home, I would just leave me alone. I need to just, you know, and, and so the people closest to me were getting the worst of me. And then also we had the pandemic hit, which I think again, changed the world, not just us. So all of these things in my world, like Howie and Nurtured Heart approach get all the credit. And there are other factors that still get some credit, right? There's plenty to go around. It was almost like a perfect storm though, of all of these things happening. Even my wife and I being empty nesters for a while, when Serena moved out, my son moved out. Thankfully, they are both. My son is about to graduate in a month and he is moving back too. We don't know about in this house yet, but moving back to Tucson at least. Um, so anyways, the, the thing I'm just trying to point out is I, I think what Nurtured Heart could have solved for me earlier is that, and it's almost more of a Stephen Covey sort of thing than a Nurtured Heart when, he, when Stephen Covey talks about keeping the first things first. Like why was I giving so much of the best of me to these students and their needs and their families. And I love them and I am so glad that I did. But why would I give my best self to these almost strangers and then just the dregs of whatever's left to my own family and kids? And so what Nurtured Heart allowed me to do is not just focus on the positives and the negatives and switch that energy right side up, but it more let me get my priority straight of first things first. Like, yes, I want to be there for these kids and these families and whoever I work with, but the people closest to me deserve the best of me. And that's what I think is, is this, like when I hear them talk sometimes is the ego based, like I almost feel bad. Like Caleb didn't even recognize these stories that I told. It, it makes me feel like I was like the evil Grinch or like horrible human. And I don't think I was, but I do want to recognize that again, the behaviors, sadly, that Serena, Ray, my mom, my wife, Debbie, had to put up with at home were, were the worst of me. They were, they were the me when I was exhausted. They were, the, they were the me when I had given everything I could give, and now I just needed to recharge. And, and so, again, I'm babbling, but I just want to say I know there's a bunch of parents out there, and you're working, and you're struggling, and you're trying to do the best you can do. And I hope that this is just a reminder to really adjust that balance for yourself. Like, why do we give the best of ourselves to the people that are not the closest to us? So that was more than I wanted to say, sorry. And that's yeah. important also, Freddie, for you to, for, for us all to recognize that you ran a school that was a huge source of hope and, and um, opportunity for so many people. That says a lot about who you were. I mean, if, if you were that Grinch there, they wouldn't be, you know, they wouldn't be successful. There was something you were that loving, seeing the positive, believing in people person, or you wouldn't have done all the work you did at all. So that was way before Nurtured Heart. That was just who you were. So yeah, 
Yeah. Okay, Anita, you have been so patient. Can we all recognize Anita's patience? <laughs> Thank you for recognizing the greatness of my patience. Um, I will say that, you know, I kind of am also looking at it generationally. Um, my, I, I am Jewish by upbringing, my parents, um, and I looked at what I brought as a child and, or what I had as a child, and then looked at how I wanted to be as a mother. And then at the same time, I'm looking at my grandchildren who are all becoming young adults at the same time that we're looking at Nurtured Heart. And one of the things I um, carry from my mother, and I now am understanding more about generational trauma, and I was not traumatized, but I also do understand that we all had experiences that we respond to or we have um, nurtured in ourselves unknowingly perhaps um, that have caused us to react in certain ways or behave in certain ways. One of the things that my parents certainly modeled for me was that everybody else on the outside was judging them based on whatever their kids were doing. And so that was a way, that was an expectation that I carried and something that I intellectually did not accept, but in my heart, I did. And as my grandchildren especially, um, started to get to this teenage years where their independent, you know, individual personalities were showing up, their own struggles, um, where I was no longer just, you know, grandma who had fun with them and, you know, did things with them and did that. But how are we going to really develop independent relationships um, and honor who they were? Because I'm going to be honest, too, all of them are very intelligent, they're talented, they're wonderful, but they all have unique um, struggles and unique things, you know, it, situations that they're working through. Um, and Nurtured Heart allowed me to focus on me and my reaction to each of them, to really being able to identify their individual greatness, which was no longer the group of four grandkids that were together all the time because that's what we all did all the time, but who were they individually and how could I build a relationship with each of them? So I am very grateful to that part of Nurtured Heart that has allowed me to reflect on myself and make some decisions as to how I want to support relationships in our family. So I, I feel like what you just brought to the table is a whole, we can do a whole recording on just that, but this idea of the, the, um, that other people are judging me based on how my kids are acting. I feel like that's such a relatable, um, topic. I mean, I'm Jewish too, <laughs> and I'm, I'm very, I'm in the Orthodox community. So I'm very seeped in all the, the Jewish cultures, the goods and the bads, you know, <laughs> it's all a mix. Um, there's generational stuff for sure. Um, yeah. but that, that, I don't know that that's just Jewish. I think that that is something that many people feel is that fear of what other people think, um, when their kid is just being a kid or when their kid is not being just a kid is, is a little out of the box or a lot out of the box. Um, and, and the wanting to stick them back in the box real quick, you know, you can come out of the box and at home, but not out here, not in the grocery store, not in the park, like hide that, like don't show anyone because, and that, that transition for you was so powerful um, that you were able to take nurtured heart as a way of you bringing your focus back to, well, whatever's going on with them, that's them. And so let me focus on me and what I'm bringing to the relationship and that I'm proud of what I'm bringing. You know, to it's so interesting really quickly, sir. I'm sorry. It's so interesting because that's the same, that's the same point, right? That I was just making. We put on our best clothes. We put on our best behavior for when we're out in public with strangers, and then we can act, you know, all the messy ways when we're at home. And again, I want to respect others but for sure. But how backwards is that? Like, shouldn't we do some of our messy things out and about with strangers and then be on our best behavior with those that we love and are closest to us? Um, so again, I just wanted to point that out. It's the same kind of upside down thinking that I that I think really infects a lot of what we're talking about. And 
can I say one more thing? <laughs> that also goes to boundaries of like just the other day, someone asked me if I can do something and the clear answer was no. <laughs> like, but I felt so bad that I couldn't just help. Like p other people help me when I need help. And I'm so appreciative of that. I mean, after I had a baby, the community was here for me and whatever. And here I am at this person's asking me the simple thing, but it's like, well, then I'm, saying no to something. If I'm saying yes to her, I'm saying no to me. I'm saying no to my kids. And what's my priority? So like, that's just, yes. Wow. Okay. Serene. Yeah. I think the, it extends beyond kids. I think I had a very similar experience bringing a new person into the family in that of Caleb of feeling like anything he does or says or is reflects on me and that I'm responsible for all of that to a degree that's true. But to another degree, like I need to give him the space to be who he is and to form his own relationships. And the toll it takes on me to just feel like I'm responsible for everything. It just, it makes me a much more controlling person that I would like to be. Um, and it's, I mean, it's just a big emotional toll. Um, I think I'll probably experience similar feelings with my kids, but hopefully I'm working through some of that now so that it'll be less of an issue. Um, you know, and that's part of the breaking generational and curse seems strong, but you know what I mean? Of just like kind of learning as we go. Um, yeah. Can I ask you like, what does that look like? Like that's a very relatable thing for husbands too. <laughs> Well, I could speak to that. And I think everybody, anybody, anybody who you feel like is attached to you in some way, it's like, now that's a reflection on me. And there's that feeling of like, oh, don't, don't do that. Stop, you know, wait till we get home. Can we do this in the car? Like one second, you know, um, and that controlling piece is also so relatable, wanting to control it because we don't want it to reflect on us. So you're saying that Nurtured Heart has been this, you're all saying that Nurtured Heart has been this permission or this um clarity or tools to be able to not be that way anymore to be a new way but i for our audience and also i'm thinking i don't know that our whole audience even knows nurtured heart so you know could be this is something they're listening to to learn more about nurtured heart so maybe we can add more about actually what in nurtured heart is the is the thing you know the nurtured heart like what is it um that's aiding you and not being like that and in, and is and what is what is the new look like like what is what is the not worrying about that how does that happen i think it's the stand so largely the clarity and the clarity being i can't control him or he like i can't control others can or you, like can you just say what the three stands are first yes. so the first stand absolutely no i will not energize negativity stand two absolutely yes i will relentlessly energize and create positive um, experiences and stand three, absolutely clear. So that's the one really about kind of limits, boundaries. Um, and that's a big one for me, I think, making sure you're not taking on things that aren't yours. So the stand three clarity of like, what is my responsibility? What is within my control? Um, and then stands one and two of making sure that I'm not just like, he might have a whole day of doing fine things, but then he does, he says one thing that I like, don't like, and I'll focus on that of like, oh, why did you say that? You shouldn't have said that. Why are you doing that? Uh, so fixing that upside down energy of like, okay, but there were maybe hours where things were going really well. Um, yes, that's what I would say for it. Yeah, I was gonna say the exact same thing, uh, just with a different example. Again, I think it's, maybe it's just in my head and it's all connecting right now, or maybe this has just always been true and, and we're voicing it. But I was taught, well, religiously very quickly, because my mom is Jewish, my dad is a very, very traditional Catholic Mexican man. So I grew up often going to synagogue on Saturday and uh, Catholic mass on Sunday. So I can tell you that guilt and shame and feeling judged by your children's behavior is 100% not just Jewish. Um, and it might be every religion, those are just the two I grew up with. But what I was going to say is it's the same energetic shift, right? Like I was taught very much a stranger, a teacher, somebody out in public, I should always give them the benefit of the doubt. 
if they do something bad, I'm going to come to their defense. Oh, they were stressed out or they were like, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. Or even like a family friend, you know, the great aunt that you only see once every few months or every, you know, once a year or something, you would, you would purposefully ignore lots of annoying behaviors and just like, well, that's how they are, but they're this way. And they would name like one greatness. And so I'm supposed to ignore all these other obnoxious things because this person has this greatness. And then similarly with the people closest to us, it was the reverse. Like, well, of course you're smart and hardworking and amazing mom. You're always like that. Like, that's just how you are. But this thing you do drives me insane. And so it's kind of like the, you know, for those of you that have been through a training, uh, there's a, there's a slide that we use at our nurtured heart trainings that just has a big rectangle, like a, a PowerPoint slide or something with a white background with a little tiny purple dot on it. And when you ask people who have never seen this before, like, what is this a picture of? They almost always say, you know, it's a big white or sorry, it's a purple dot. And they don't recognize that the majority, like an overwhelming 99 point whatever percent of the screen is the white. They just recognize the dot. And I think that's what we do by nature, evolution, we could get into all of that. But I think that uh, what's important is just to make that dot, the thing that we're going to focus on overwhelmingly, be the positive, right? Be the greatness. Because just to finish that point, we do that to ourselves as well, right? Like there are certain people where you ignore all kinds of negatives and you judge them by the greatest thing they ever did. I think we do that with historical figures and celebrities and sports figures, maybe the most, right? They can be any which way in their life. We don't even know, but they did this one great thing. And we're like, we just blow that up so positively. And then with ourselves or people close to us, we often, again, the reverse. We judge them by the worst thing they ever did. So my dad did amazing things. He's an incredible man. He's, he's overcome so much and he's dealt with so much. And then there's this thing that I don't like. And I just, I mean, I spent my entire twenties probably and most of my teens just so incredibly frustrated with that one thing. And when people ask me like, yeah, I knew all the great things, but that is not where my energy went. And so again, I just want to point out like what Serena said, when there's hours worth of relationship where everything's going well, and this person's making so many choices that are good, even if that person is us, why do we then stay up at night, you know, swirling in our own miseries and doubts about the one thing we did wrong, or even the 10 things we did wrong, when there were hundreds of things we or they did right, and it changes everything. Well, and I'll give an example and use Serena since she's here. Um, so here's some differences. I have very mixed feelings about tattoos. Certainly, they've become <laughs> more acceptable to me. Um, Serena loves tattoos. Maybe she'll show them to you. But when she was getting her first one, she was just going to turn 18. Now, I have friends and maybe some other family members on another side of the family who have very strong feelings about tattoos. Don't like them, shouldn't get them. They're horrible for you. They're bad medically. You can never, you know, the whole thing. I chose um, to go with Serena when she was getting her first tattoo. I think I paid for it. Did I pay yeah. for it? I think I paid for it for her 18th birthday. So here was Nurtured Heart to me. She's going to do it anyway. I could be negative about it and share that negative energy and try to control or affect her choice. But in my heart, I knew she was going to do it anyway. And my relationship was more that I want to be part of it. I'm grateful. And I think I told you that I am grateful that you invited me to go with you because I felt like I was there as a support. I could witness and be sure that it was medically clean and safe. And the person was, you know, not in some back alley using dirty needles. Um, so I kind of feel like that's a nurtured heart thing to me too. My, my clarity was that I want this relationship with Serena. I am not going to judge her. My negative energy at that point was my own. I am not going to expend my own negative energy to try to control her behavior. And I am going to be supportive and positive about the choice she made because it's her choice to make. I still do not have any tattoos on my body. Um, so 
to me, that is kind of a, a, a change in myself of how I can react and build relationships using nurture cart stands. And it's also related to what we were just saying really quickly, because my wife, very much not a fan, and my mother-in-law, even more so not a fan. But now she's not only just judging me and my wife for having a daughter who wants a tattoo and then gets a tattoo. Now she's judging me for having a mom who actually went and supported it. And, you know, just where my energy goes, like I love my mother-in-law. And she has every right to the opinion she has. And those opinions have no bearing on what my daughter can do in her life. And I don't need to diminish either one of them. I don't need to make it a conflict. Like my mother-in-law is 100% correct in her views for her. And my daughter is 100% fine to get as many tattoos as she wants or doesn't want. Like it's her body. It's her life. It's how it is. We all have different views about things. But again, I think before I really did a lot of this work, um, that would have been harder for me. I would have tried to have my wife control my mother-in-law's response. I would have felt a need to go talk to my mother-in-law and try to justify my mom or my daughter's behavior. And there would have been so much just messiness. And now it's just so clean. Like, hey, you know, I don't have tattoos either. I don't love the idea. I'm not opposed to it as strongly as my mother-in-law, but like we can all have whatever opinion we want, but this is a human being who is really intelligent and capable of making decisions. And that has nothing to do with me. So. Yeah, I, I, I just have to say that something that I hear both of you talking about that I think is like a new, um, maybe a deeper level for uh, on stand three clarity where the decision is being led by this clarity. You know, I think maybe when you first learn nurtured heart or, you know, you just read about it, you think clarity is like, what's the rule, right? Or what's the consequence, you know, what's the system. And on that level, maybe the rule is no tattoos in this, in this home, right? Which would mean Serena is going, out of the rules and now Serena is in reset or whatever you know like on a very superficial level it's like no this is our value system and we have to stick to it and so we can't bend but there's a deeper clarity that I'm hearing which is a more which is so much broader and so much richer and and leading the whole nurtured heart approach leading the whole relationship of what's my clarity as who I am in this relationship what's my role in this relationship who are you where do you start and end where do i start and end and the clarity of uh, um like what i want am i choosing the rule over the person like you could have done that you could have told serena you can't come into this house if you had a tattoo you know that could have happened and maybe it does happen in the world i'm sure it does somewhere you know maybe not hope I, i'd like to pray not anymore but it definitely happened in the past, you know, um, but there's the clarity of what is my clarity? What are my priorities? Is it the rule? Is that what I care about? Or is it the person? Is it the relationship? I um, had this, it, it, someone was over at my house. I don't remember who, when my, one of my sons has a really hard time losing games, really, really hard time. And this person phrased it. Um, I wonder, if, I don't know who said it. Anyway, someone said it, you could either lose the game or you could lose your friend. So just think about it. And it was just such a clear, it wasn't energized, which is why I was so on board with it because it's such a good clarity for him to understand. He's autistic. He doesn't understand relationship all that well on his own, or at least our version of it. Um, and I guess communication is probably a better way to say that. And so the idea that like, wait a second, if I, if I refuse to let my friend ever get a point, if I refuse to let my friend ever win a game and I make it so scary for them to lose a game that they're never going to even, they're going to let me win you know, then they're not going to want to be my friend anymore. So now I have a choice. Do I want to win a game or do I want to win a friend? You know, do I want to lose a game? Do I want to lose a friend? And I feel like this is a level of clarity that is so empowering and freeing and beautiful that Nurtured Heart can bring when we take it out of the stands, you know, and we ask ourselves the bigger stand, what are we standing for? Right? Like our bigger stand, what are we taking? You're taking three stands. What are you standing for? Uh, take behavior management could be, you know, that's your, that's your prerogative. You want to do that? You could do that. You could totally take a stand for behavior management, use the three stands for that. That's possible. But 
but there's so much more we could do with this. And I think the essence of Nurtured Heart is, no, we're taking a stand for people. We're taking a stand for seeing people and, and, and allowing people. And I mean, they don't need our permission. Why, what, since when do they need our permission? Like just, but seeing people and in that frame, the clarity of this is a person, this is their life and, and to find their beauty in that and to trust, to trust their beauty in that, to trust you have a brain, you have a body, you understand the connection, you can research, you can make your own choices. There's, you know, you, you've come to this decision. It must be a good decision for you. Like just not even, I don't even need to get into that. I don't even need to, I don't even do my own research. Like, unless you want me to, like, this is your choice, but that's, that's based in such a foundational level of clarity that comes before the three stands of like, no, we stand for relationship here. We stand for acceptance here. We stand for seeing people here. That's just so freeing and juicy and delicious. I love that. So, well, you know that we've talked about this before. That is where my true passion lies. I just, I just want to share quickly a couple things because one is a caveat. My experiences with high school kids and my kids are now adults. It may be vastly different. I haven't spent a whole lot of my energy thinking about, you know, this with elementary school age kids or something. So I want to give that as the caveat, but I don't think it changes, to be honest. A rule is a rule, and that's great. We, we want to teach our kids ways to be in life that we think is going to be good for them. And sometimes it's a tattoo, which is like a really easy thing to assess for some people. But my, maybe it's being on time or, or keeping their room clean or <clears throat> being organized. I, I hear parents struggling with these sorts of things all the time. And, and I just want to ask the same question. Like what I usually say about nurtured heart approach is there's not, it's not a shortcut. There's no magic pill. There's no fancy little formula. It's just simply getting the energy focused on relationship. And I think a lot of people at every level have messed this up, but it's not manipulation. It is relationship. So again, what if my son is never going to be organized. What if he's never going to be on time? Well, he's still a great person who has all sorts of great qualities. And if I'm going to lose a relationship on him, or even if, if I'm not going to lose a relationship with him, but I'm going to label him negatively, even if it's only in my own heart and mind, I don't even say those negative things out loud. I've still lost something. Like he is an honestly, individually, miraculous human being in and of himself, whether he does these things that I think he should do or not. And so, yes, I have a responsibility as a parent to try to guide him to be responsible and organized and on time, but he is who he is. And so I get really worried sometimes, you know, unconditional love and all these things have been so tossed about that I don't even think people know what it means anymore. But even with the tattoo or something clear, it means I'll love you as long as you follow my rules. That's horrible to me. And so I hope we're not there. And then another thing that I just want to say, because hopefully it will cause conversation to happen, is the other thing that I think is really unique about this three generation right here, our little faces on this screen, is I have been fascinated by the power dynamic in Nurtured Heart. And I think how most people think about it is person with power doing nurtured heart to person without power. So it's a teacher doing it with a doing nurtured heart to or with a student, or it's a therapist with a patient or client, or it's a parent with a child. And obviously sitting right here, like I have now my equal in my adult daughter and in my way of thinking, much more my superior in my mother, she is wiser, better, more, ex all these things. So how does the power dynamic work when it's not just me doing this thing to someone who has less power than me, but when it shifts to equal footing, which I think could be spouse to spouse, colleague to colleague, or better yet, even I'm interested in how nurtured heart works when I can do it with someone who in this particular power dynamic has more power than me. And I think that's where there's a lot of work to be done in this field is when we're not thinking so much, which I think, again, it's related to what you're saying, which is why I'm bringing up. It's not just a parent telling the kid like, hey, I have rules. Like 
this was even part of my philosophy at our school. And again, it was a high school, but I want the kid knocking on the parents and teachers doors saying, hey, these are my rules. When are you all going to get your school in line with what I want? You know, I'm here. I'm a 15 year old kid. I'm going to be running this place in 20 years. When do I get to tell you what my rules are? And we don't leave space for that all the time. So I want to just say, think about the power dynamic. And I hope that's what we are like a daily forge. We get to work in this fire every day to see how that how that works. I don't know if you guys have anything to say about that or wherever else you want to go, but I think it's interesting. I kind of, um, I, I hope I'm not, I don't want to take away from what you just said. It's such an important, powerful thing. And I think I might be a little bit by doing this. It's okay. But I get this question all the time because I'm going back to the whole tattoo thing. Um, I get this question all the time. But if I don't tell them, right, like Anita going with Serena, it's like, but if you go with her, then she's going to think it's okay. And then I'm not being clear. Um, oh, how do I be clear? And so that's what I wanted to ask you, Serena, is I wanted to just kind of display this for people. Like, did, did your grandma going with you to get the tattoo make you forget all the opinions that you've heard about tattoos? <laughs> no. Um, and I think all of us, uh, but I'll just speak for myself, like, I value honesty and bluntness a lot. I will never not share my opinion on something perhaps to a fault. Um, so I'll use it with my spouse, Caleb, like I will always tell him how I feel about something, always, probably too much. But I am getting better at the clarity of, but you can, but I still support your decision. I've been working on this a lot with my brother, actually, as he's going through different decisions or questions, and he comes to me and I'm very clear about what I feel, but I'm also very clear but it's your decision, but you know the situation best. I'm going to support your decision. I'm going to support what you're going to do. So I don't think any of us are trying to say that you don't share um, what you think or why you think it, um, but it's still being clear that you're showing up and that they ultimately are the one to make that decision. Yeah. And that certainly was the change in my behavior because before I would have not liked it and not wanted her to do it. And I probably would have dropped lots of little negative messages about, you know, you're really young, you'll never, you know, all of those things. Um, so the difference was I was clear. I mean, I think she knew that I did not think it was a great idea. Um, but I, again, I recognized her right to make the choice. She was old enough, it was legal, and my choice was to support it, which didn't mean that I thought it was a great idea. It meant I was supporting her and her choice. No, I think it's a great question, Musi, because again, to me, it's it's what I was just getting at. There's no shortcuts. Mm -hmm. Like you have to just be on it. If you want clarity, be clear. Serena, I don't think you should get a tattoo. I don't think it's a good idea, but I love you way beyond a tattoo or not. So I'm going with you for all the reasons you said. Um, again, it's it's going to work out in, in lots of different arenas, but my point being and I love that you asked to clarify because it's so important. I think most people just assume if you go with them, you're supporting it. I'm like, no, I'm not supporting it. I'm supporting them. And that's such a huge difference. And the same is true for the opposite. And this is what we don't see is that if, you know, and tell me how this would feel to you, Serena, if, you know, Anita didn't go with you and said, and, and nobody even would, look at your tattoo when you can, I mean, I, I don't think anyone's kicking out of the house, but like, let's say they didn't want to see it and they didn't want you to talk about it. And they asked you to please wear long sleeves in the house. You know, would that, how would that feel to you? I probably would not live here as long as I have. <laughs> um, it would have been a huge, just sticking point in our relationship. And I would have felt like I couldn't show up authentically. Um, I have people in my life, especially in my now in-laws, but in my life and family, that that is more how the dynamic is. And it really changes how you're able to show up in that relationship. Um, I now, since we're talking about tattoos so much, I have like eight now or something like that. Um, and as I think it's also about, in my view, you get the time to prove yourself kind of. And I think as I've 
made good decisions about what my tattoos are or what they mean to me. It's also changed how my, I'll specifically say my mother, how my mother has reacted to it. She was a lot more negative about the first or the second or the third, and she's a lot more positive about you know, the fourth, fifth, sixth. Still not positive. No, she's but much more positive. Yes. <laughs> so she's gotten more to a place of understanding or acceptance. Um, and I think that's allowed because I was able to still show up. So if you're given the space to still exist, there's so much more opportunity for growth and acceptance. Can I, I, I definitely have an agenda here, but I think this is so important for my audience. I'm like excited that this is coming up and I want to like push, press it, press it, press it. Like the words you use, first of all, what you just said, like still exist, which what does that say? That say that if that says that if nobody cared what you put in your tattoos, they just said tattoos are wrong and I don't care why you're doing it. I don't even want to hear why you're doing it. And I don't even, don't even, don't even explain to me your logic. Like it is wrong and I will not hear anything about it ever. And it's just a non top you, you're, you're, you're just talking honestly. And you said the fact that I still exist. Well, that would say that in the other scenario, you would feel like you don't exist, which is ouch. And there can't be a relationship when I feel invisible. That is exactly the opposite of relationship. And then the other thing you said, was about, I feel like I can show up authentically. When again, it's the way that, that people are thinking, I'm coming, I'm being clear with the rules and being clear with the rules and being clear with the rules. The way that's received is not clear with the rules. The way that's received is, it's not about the rules, it's about me. You're not okay with me and my choices. You're not okay with my, my brain power and my morals and my ability to reason and you don't you would you said you wouldn't last in this house very long my guess is that it wouldn't come across as oh they really don't like tattoos okay i get that it would be like they don't care about me it would become personal and so the same way i think it's the yeah i think it's important to highlight that we think we're being clear but we're being personal when we put the rule before the person and so the clarity can be there, like Freddie, you said so beautifully, like, I don't think you should do this, um, but I will go with you if you're going to go anyways, you're an adult and you can make your own decisions, or maybe you weren't even an adult yet, but you're making your own decisions. You're doing this anyway. Um, and I'm absolutely not going to let that stop us from being a thing. Like you are it's way too important. And my views are my views. I've made them clear. That's all I can do. You make your own decision. And I trust your decision. Like you said, I trust your decision. I trust you to make the best decision for you, um, a power in that. And, and it, again, just like in the negative, it doesn't become about the rule. You don't start to think, oh, now I won my grandma over and now my grandma loves tattoos because she came with me, right? It's just an awareness of, wow, she loves me that much that she's coming with me, even though she doesn't like tattoos. Am I right? Is that? Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. I think there's a, just two things. One, I think for Nurtured Heart, for me, it has helped me be more honest with myself. And then I'm also have realized lately that the rule, the only rules that I can make are rules for myself and my reactions to whatever's happening around me. I really can't make rules for other people. Um, so I listen to a lot and I think that's a journey I'm taking in Nurtured Heart is just that level of understanding is so much more self-directed back inside of me. Um, and that is why I can do it because it is not a manipulation or behavior or controlling anybody else. It's really controlling myself in the relationship, which then means whoever's in the other part of the relationship with me is going to learn to interact or how, you know, how that energy exchange is going to be between us. Yeah, I hope that this doesn't come across as manipulation, although I want to point it out because it is a benefit of having real relationship. As Serena, well, all three of us, but I'll use me. As I respect Serena and show that I value and love her beyond her choices, she then values my opinion more because I'm now a real person in her life and an actual relationship. I'm not just dad. Oh, I got to obey dad. I love dad. Dad was my dad. No, I'm dad, but I'm also a real live human being in her life that she has a relationship with. And so, yes, 
maybe next time she's about to make a choice when I say, I don't really think that's a good idea. I don't support that idea. She now knows it's not coming from judgment. It's not, I, I won't toss her aside if she makes the wrong quote unquote decision. It's just simply a human being in relationship with her who loves her, who is giving her this perspective and she can do with it what she will. And I'm going to have her back and love and support her through it. So again, the manipulative piece, everything here is very nuanced. If I want her to value my opinion down the road, I have to build a relationship with her that's based on something again, besides just random authority. You know, how many of us have very clear memories of just because I said so from a teacher, a policeman, a parent, whatever, it's not a compelling argument. And it doesn't lead to trust and respect down the road. It actually leads to the opposite of that. This was really fun, you guys. I want to um, give an, uh, a minute of closure here for um, us. I, there's so much more. There's so much more that even I just want to say. But um, I want to just open the floor for any last minute reflections or words to the audience here um, before we say goodbye on this recording for this time. I guess I would just echo the last thing my dad said about it's really building the relationship. And once you build the relationship, all the other things that you may go into nurtured heart thinking you want start to fall into place, but you need to not have, you know, not need to not get stuck on that. You need to be stuck on the relationship. Um, and coming from my age of almost 72 ish 72 i think 72 um repair is possible so you know you don't need to live in the past you don't need to make decisions based on past relationships you can take a step forward in a relationship right now oh yeah, I, i've said plenty already other than just thank you i would love to do these as often as we can schedule them i always love talking to you Thank you. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you, Anita. And thank you, Serena, for being here and being so honest and authentic and willing to just like put the real the real story out there. Um, I know how valuable that is to me. I know how valuable that is to everyone listening. And um, till next time. Till next time. Have a great day. Thank you.